hello, 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 hello. There was a momentary pause there. I apologize. I don't know what's going on. It didn't hit the right button. Hi, guys. Hi. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to The Cult. The Cult is a show that I stream Monday through Friday on YouTube, on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, and on Rumble, where we do deep dives into the far left, and I show you things that no one else on the internet is showing you, while all of the uh, commentators and the journalists and the pundits and the coffee shills on YouTube are pretending they understand what the left is doing. God, did we learn yesterday that the that that at least the quartering, I suppose I should not ascribe the quarterings ignorance to everyone on the right. That would be unfair. The quartering is one retarded YouTuber that for that somehow some way has been able to cultivate an epically retarded audience. Actually, I feel like that's even too mean for them because I feel like I feel like there might be many people in the quartering's audience that are significantly smarter than him. Maybe they just like video games, maybe they just like that sort of thing and and they they're significantly smarter than him on normal stuff, but they get there it's kind of like they go to the quartering, he's like their guilty pleasure. They know he's a raging 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 idiot. But, like, he talks about stuff they like, and so they're willing to overlook briefly that he's a raging, 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 raging idiot. It's kind of like, I know smart people who do that. I know really smart people who like things like Ethan Ralph for reasons past my understanding. I don't understand why anyone watches Ethan Ralph. And I say that as someone, I've actually watched a significant amount of Ethan Ralph to figure out what was going on in the whole cozy sphere. And I don't understand it. I don't understand why people willingly watch that garbage without, uh, without, uh, without having a, a very good reason for it. But we did find out yesterday that the quartering, it just like, it was, it was depressing, if I'm honest. It was depressing. But before we get into our content today, I do actually have an update on that. So check this out. Check this out. Do you guys remember how? Okay, so basically for people who weren't around yesterday, and we're going to get into real content. I've got a speech. from We're going to watch a speech from Harvard, guys. We're going to watch Harvard University content today. I just feel the need to do a little update because I had an epiphany. You know, on the video yesterday where I was destroying any sense that people might have that the quartering knows what he's talking about in regards to DEI. Hang on one sec. Let me get this chat from uh, Naruto. Jay was going to say, I bet one of the unhinged things Jeremy said you did was yelling, we know where you live, and then I saw your tweet. About- yeah, well, this is, ex- this is exactly what I'm talking about, Naruto. This is exactly what I'm talking about. So I was rather confused because I haven't talked about the quartering. I haven't thought about the quartering. I haven't gone anywhere near the quartering since he made money smearing a legitimate victim of human trafficking in Eliza Blue for weeks on end, video after video after video. I blocked his ass because I think that's ragingly unethical. And I never looked back. He, quite frankly, didn't have anything I was interested in anyway. I was doing my own thing over here. Never thought about him. Until the last couple of weeks when I kept hearing from my audience... That the quartering is calling me an unhinged nut job for no good reason. Now, the first time he called me an unhinged nut job was when I got the CEO of the Daily Wire to admit that he will not hire anyone critical of Israel. Now, I don't know why I'm such an unhinged nut job because I asked very strategic and carefully worded questions to back the CEO of the Daily Wire into a corner to get him to admit that he will not hire anyone critical of Israel, which was a pretty, according to the quartering, according to the quartering himself, I asked the most like impactful question of the night. So he called me an unhinged nut job for that. And then he said, she asked the most impactful question of the night, apparently. So two things that doesn't add up. And then the other day I heard that someone sent in a super chat about me to his channel. And he again said, She's an unhinged nut job, and I hope that she's on a better path, but I've seen her do deeply unhinged things. Now, this was a surprise to me because, again, 
I hadn't thought about the quartering in probably over a year at this point, and I've never interacted with the quartering, and I've never talked to the quartering, and the quartering has certainly never shown interest in the thousands of hours of content that I have created that you can't find anywhere else where I'm doing deep dives into the far left. If the quartering had actually availed himself of that content, perhaps he would have been a little bit better equipped to explain what DEI is to his audience, but we'll put that aside for right now. But I was thinking about it last night and I remembered, holy shit, a couple years ago, the quartering got his panties all in a twist. Because a couple years ago, so here's what happened. In New Hampshire, there was a school that this is, I need we can we all get it get it get in a, a little time machine. We're gonna go a walk down memory lane to two years ago. Two years ago was a different time. Two years ago was a different place. Two years ago, the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire actually existed in a productive way. Everyone was working well together. The Twitter account was was triggering people. We were actually doing stuff in New the two two years ago the Libertarian Party actually did things together in New Hampshire. It was great. Honestly, it really was. Like, I, 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 I am no longer involved with the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire because effectively there is no Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. I don't care if they have a Twitter account or not. They literally don't exist. It, the only place that the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire exists today is Twitter. And I've gone into the reasons for that before, but... Basically, everyone left. Everyone good, everyone of any value left the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. And so now they only exist in the form of a Twitter account. The Mises Caucus, too. I was involved in the Libertarian Party Mises Caucus back then. This is when we were gearing up to take over the Libertarian Party. It was a really exciting time, honestly. Like, I know things didn't turn out so well, and I'm and I'm really sad about that. I genuinely am. I'm sad about that on a local level in New Hampshire. I'm sad about that on a national level. Like, it really does, because it was so good. In 2021, in 2022, it was like, it was so much fun. It was so much fun and so good to be involved in the Mises Caucus in the Libertarian Party. It was so good and so much fun to be involved in the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. And then as libertarians are prone to do, they just imploded that shit. But back then it was really good, okay? And I was having a great time and I had great friends and it was a community and we actually did stuff together. Now, one of the things that we did back in early 2022 was that the chair the then chair of the libertarian party of new hampshire his name is nolan pelletier and his wife jess they had a kid in school and i i'm not going to name the school district just because i'm just i'm not like people can go back and look but essentially what happened is it was discovered by the parents in this school district that they had their kids in that the school had been covering up for teachers who were molesting students. And there were multiple articles in the newspaper about this. And back then, actually, I, I wrote this whole thing because Katie Herzog back in 2022 did this whole bullshit hit piece podcast on me where she just like, I got to tell you guys, Katie Herzog is one evil dyke. I fucking said it. She is one evil dyke. Because literally every single thing that Katie Herzog said about me in that podcast, I easily debunked it with like information that was publicly available. And I had and I had offered to answer. I knew she was doing a podcast about me. I didn't know she was doing a raging hit piece about me. I offered to answer any questions she had. I could have provided her with all of this. If she wanted to concoct a story and then say, Carlin, what about this? What about this? What about this? I literally had all it was all publicly available she could have found it anyway after this evil fucking cunt published her podcast about me i went through the process of debunking all of the bullshit that she said and one of the things that katie herzog got her panties in a twist over is exactly the same thing that jeremy from the quartering 
got his panties in a twist over. And so if people want want receipts about this, this is all available on my Substack. where basically what happened was we, and I'm not going to go through this whole article because I've done it before. There was an issue about masking. They arrested Nolan for not wearing a mask in a school board meeting. So that was the first issue with the school, with, with the school board. And then we were doing all sorts of stuff around that. But then, but then it was reported in multiple media outlets in New Hampshire that the same school board that arrested the chair of the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire for not wearing a mask at the school board meeting, they had been covering up for teachers who were sexually molesting students. Of course, Katie Herzog didn't talk about this in her podcast at all. She didn't talk about the circumstances. And so essentially what happened was the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire organized a whole contingent of people to go and protest this school board to cause problems at this school board meeting, et cetera, et cetera. You can find out all the information there about that. But back to back to this. So what happened when that happened is that we started posting on Twitter. We were using the hashtag make tyrants afraid again. And this was an agreed upon strategy. I wasn't even the one who came up with this. Jeremy Kaufman is the one who came up with this. Jeremy Kaufman was the then CEO of Library and Odyssey. I don't know what involvement Jeremy has today. I haven't talked to Jeremy in a really long time because Jeremy is kind of an asshole. But at the time, we were all getting along. Okay. And so. This was actually not even my strategy. This was Jeremy Kaufman's strategy. And everyone agreed to it. And everyone knew what was going on. And so what happened was Jeremy Kaufman in the, so we went to two different school board meetings. In the first meeting, Jeremy Kaufman yelled, we know where you live at the school board. Now, that is just factually true. It, it is literally just a factually true statement. If you're on a school board, you have run for office. That means your address is public information. You literally can look up the home address of any publicly elected official. So saying we know where you live, you know, some might call it unnecessarily taunting the school board, but I call it just stating a piece of factual information. And I don't I don't regret this. To be really clear, I do not fucking apologize. If people are more pissed off at the fact that we went to a school board meeting and yelled, we know where you live at the school board when they were covering up for teachers molesting students and not telling the parents what was going on. I'm sorry. I just have to say that you have your priorities all effed up so i don't apologize but i also was not the one who implemented this strategy or came up with it so the first meeting happened on december 12th jeremy kaufman yelled we know where you live at the school board the second meeting happened a couple of weeks later we went again and at that meeting jeremy kaufman couldn't be there because he had something else he needed to do and so i was like fine I'll do it because I have a big mouth. You guys know me. I have a big mouth. And so when it came time, I yelled, we know where you live at the school board meeting. Now, when we came back that night, a bunch of us were on Twitter and we were all excited and we were all amped up and we had all had a great time. And it was a, it was, it was a bonding exercise. Okay. That's what it was. It was a bonding exercise. And so we were posting about it on Twitter. We were using the make tyrants afraid again, hashtag and yada, 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 yada. Well, Jeremy from the quartering got his knickers all in a twist. And I'm not going to go back and find the tweets about it because they were just copy. Like Jeremy from the quartering started flaming the LP and H. He started flaming me. He was like, how dare you yell? We know where you live at a school board meeting. I was like, bro. You don't even live in New Hampshire. Shut the fuck up. And so they, they basically started this massive fight between the LP and H and the fucking quartering because he was being such a dick about it. But the thing of it was at the time, he was only targeting me. He was only targeting me. 
and he was only complaining about me. He's like, how dare that unhinged bitch do this? But guess who he wasn't mentioning? He wasn't mentioning Jeremy Kaufman, who had done it a couple weeks prior, like a one month prior. No, it wasn't even one month. Two weeks, like two weeks prior to me doing it, Jeremy Kaufman did it. And this was all on video. But he only went after me and called me the unhinged one because Jeremy Kaufman at the time was the CEO of Odyssey. And so the quartering is not going to go and attack the CEO of one of the streaming platforms he's on. But he can attack me because. You know, so I just want to watch this video real quick because at the time, I mean, it's not like it's like school board meetings are recorded, yo. It's not as though, again, it's not as though this this information wasn't available. And so after I took several weeks of shit from the quartering's audience for how dare that unhinged bitch uh, yell, we know where you live at a school board meeting, I finally made this video and I was like, Yo, the quartering, you are quick to call me a leftist for letting school board members know their addresses are public record. Would you say the same of Jeremy Kaufman, who did it two weeks before me? Or is this just a special treat you reserve for women you don't like? And let's just watch the video real quick. And you see, yo, I've lost weight since then. I'm pretty happy about that. I got to say, I'm like right there. I'm in the purple hoodie. This is the two weeks ago. Jeremy Kaufman is up here. You can see, and this is all the LP and H people. You know, Katie Herzog and her hit piece on me. Katie Herzog wanted to pretend that I was like this lone nut job that was at the school board meeting. No, bro. I was there with an entire fucking contingent of people. Let's watch. Excuse me. I have just read the rules of order for the meeting. I would ask the public to refrain from comments. That was it. That was Jeremy Kaufman yelling, we know where you live at the school board meeting on December 2nd. Now, fast forward a couple of weeks, and you're going to hear my big mouth yelling. Oh, seriously? Wow. Wow. I'm going to recess right now, and I will confer with law enforcement regarding how to proceed. Look, hang on, hang on. I just want to show this. It's not as though, like, we had the biggest fucking contingent at the entire fucking school board meeting. Look at this. Look at the room. Look at the room. There's no one there except for us. We had the biggest contingent at the damn school board meeting. Anyway, fast forward two weeks. Here we go. Hey. Tom. Tom, excuse me. I have been very patient. Excuse me. Your your three minutes your three minutes is up. Please sit down and let the next speaker move forward. That's it. I'm calling your recess again. Thank you. I do not apologize. I do not apologize. I got a restraining order for that little stunt. That restraining order is still sitting in a pile of stuff that I have sitting on my desk that I want to get framed one day when I when I eventually redo my office, which I wanted to do like two years ago, but I haven't done it yet. And I want to redo my office. And one of the things that's going to go on the wall behind me when I redo my office is the framed restraining order that I got delivered to me a couple weeks after that for yelling, we know where you live at a school board meeting. I do not apologize. I was not unhinged. Like, everyone can suck an egg. And I'm sorry, again, I just have to say, the entire reason that we were there in the first place in the largest contingent that was at the school board meeting was, first off, they arrested the president, the, the excuse me, the then chair of the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire for not wearing a mask at a school board meeting. They arrested him. And then we went back because a couple weeks later, we found out based on local news reports that this school was covering up for teachers who were molesting students. And if you really think that me and Jeremy Kaufman yelling, we know where you live at a school board meeting is deeply unhinged behavior while you are overlooking the fact that we were protesting a school that was covering up 
for teachers who were molesting students, then your priorities are all left up. And guess what happened? Guess what happened? The day after this school board meeting, the superintendent resigned. So we won. The superintendent of the school that was leading the goddamn cover up in the first place resigned the next goddamn day. We won. So this is the only interaction that I've ever had with the quartering. This is it. I can't remember any other interaction in which he had a meltdown on Twitter about my grossly unhinged behavior. I don't apologize, Jeremy. And if you want to pretend that you're outraged over what happened on this video, then why weren't you yourself using your massive platform to to share the story <clears throat> of the school district in New Hampshire that was covering up when teachers were molesting students. I don't apologize. And so I remembered this today and I retweeted the video from two years ago. And I said, hi, the quartering. I've unblocked you briefly because you have called me an unhinged nut job twice in the last two weeks, but you haven't said why. Then I remembered you got your knickers all in a twist over me yelling, we know where you live at a school board meeting where the school, where the school was covering up for teachers molesting students. What you didn't tell people was that Jeremy Kaufman, the then CEO of Odyssey, a streaming platform that the quartering is on, had done exactly the same thing two weeks prior because it was agreed upon strategy we had going into the goddamn meeting. Kind of seems like my unhinged behavior was planned. And, you, and you're just too much of a pussy to do anything like it. Do you care to comment or provide any other evidence of my unhinged behavior that you keep telling your audience about? I'm going to guess he doesn't respond to this. Jeremy, uh, Jeremy from The Quartering is in a fight right now with Fresh and Fit. But if you guys want to retweet that and tag him and post memes of him and generally mock him for being a little bitch that would never dare go to a school board meeting when the school was covering up for teachers molesting students and yell, we know where you live, to get their attention, ultimately leading to the resignation of the superintendent... Has Jeremy from the quartering ever done anything like that? Am I more of a man than Jeremy from the quartering? Do I have a bigger dick than Jeremy from the quartering? And that's why he's telling his audience that I'm an unhinged nut job with no receipts for no good reason. When I got the CEO of the Daily Wire to admit that he will not hire people who are critical of Israel. When people are super chatting him, telling him that I'm going undercover at leftist events and I'm showing people things no one on the internet is showing them, and I'm the unhinged nut job. Sure, bro. Sure. Okay. Anyway, I just want to give that brief update so you guys could see what all my unhinged be. I, I like to operate transparency. Tra 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 I like to operate uh, transparently on this channel. And so if I'm doing something unhinged, chances are I'm probably going to be bragging about it on my channel at some point. 